So that completes this part of the assembly. Now what we need to do is go back to those um, connecting rods we had a little earlier. We need to finish those guys up and get those mounted on there. So I'm going to set our arm aside for a minute and we're going to go pick out the two connecting rods. Now earlier we uh, inserted the rods into the PVC tube to get them finished. So now we got to finish putting together the rod ends. So you're going to come to your hardware pile and you're going to pull out the four black rod ends and the four pivot balls that go in there. Now, these things can be a bit of a bear as usual. You just kind of stick one in there and I like to use a pair of pliers and just kind of snap them over. Kind of, kind of grabbing and twisting with my pliers at the same time will snap that ball in into the rod end. And you can, uh, you know, you could set these on top of something to hold them up and tap that in if you needed to to get it in there. Whatever you need to get those balls inside the rod ends. Okay. Then we just take them and you're just going to start screwing them on. Now they are not pre-threaded, so they take a little bit of push to get them to start on there. Once you get one kind of started, I like to get the other one on, kind of get it started. Kind of give them a look and see if you can get them straight. They're pretty hard to get perfectly straight, to tell you the truth. So I don't tend to worry about it too much. And then what I'll do is I'll take some of my Allen wrenches laying around, and I'll drop an Allen wrench through each end. And that gives me a little something to hold on to while I twist them together. Now, what we're trying to go for here is a center to center. So center of the ball to center of the ball. We're looking for seven inches. Um, now if you have the uh, printout of the PDF, there's an actual full scale drawing that you can lay this on the PDF to measure it. Uh, I don't have that with me so I'm just going to use my handy ruler here and see if I can't figure it out. Alright, a little, a little shorter. And don't worry about the tube on there. If it's not long enough or too long, it's fairly flexible, so it, it gets out of the way, and we can, uh, we can smooth it out in the end to make sure that it's the right, um, right length and looks correct when we're done. So I'm going to go from the 1 to the 8. There we go. Perfect. So that's a perfect 7 inches. Now, what you also want to do is when you position these rod ends, they should be 90 degrees to each other. So you want to make it so when you look down the end of the rod ends, one is pointing uh, this way and one is pointing that way in relation to each other because that's how they bolt up on the robot. And try, you know, tend to look at the black plastic part, not necessarily the ball, and make sure the black plastic parts are uh, 90 degrees to each other. And then what you can do is if you have a little gap or a little bulge, I just kind of smooth this PVC piece back and forth here and that'll just take out any of the inconsistencies or fill any of the gaps and give you a nice clean rod end when you're done. Alright, let me put the other one together. Okay. So our two rod ends have been uh, assembled and set at their length. So now we're going to attach them. So for attaching the rod ends, we're getting, we're running, you know, we're using up our hardware pretty quickly here. So what we have is we're going to have two shorter 440 screws. Two slightly longer 440 screws and then we should have four 440 lock nuts, and those are the ones with the little uh, kind of blackish gray piece of plastic in the end of them. Those are lock nuts, so they stay in place. And then we're going to need our hand. Okay, so I tend to like to uh, start down here 
at the uh, at the bottom end. And basically, how this is going to happen is the screw is going to come up from the back side. Oh, we need the shorter. Sorry, we're going to use the shorter of the screws on the bottom because the thickness of the arm is thinner than at the top. It's thicker, so we need the short 440. It comes from the back side through the hole. Then it goes through the rod end and then into the nut. So, backside through the rod end into the nut. And I just get these started at first just until I get everybody in place. Um, and then they're easier to screw in. And then up top, the longer 440 goes through the rod end first through the wood tab and then we get the nut. Now you need a smaller Allen wrench for the 440 screws but you should have one from all the previous work. Okay that's one side now we're going to roll it over and put it on the other side. Okay, lower. Then the upper. And then I'll get my handy dandy needle nose. And we'll hold that nut and snug these up. Now these are a little tight because they are a locking nut. So they take a little bit more oomph to turn them on. I'm really going to have to invest in a set of little wrenches that fit these nuts. It would make this much easier. Actually, this is a good place for these guys. These are a new set of pliers I got. These are what they call parallel jaw pliers. Pretty good stuff. But they're perfect for holding the nut in this type of situation. So I think we'll use those. All right. Okay, so what that gives you is the two link rods that generate your wrist movement. All right, this arm is close to being done. So the final thing we need to do before we skin this arm is we got to deal with all our servo wires. So this is where our servo extensions come in. Now, we're running all these wires. They're all going to run down and pass through these two oval slots out the bottom of the hand. Uh, at the bottom of the, the, the plate there. So we're going to go ahead and I'll take these two wires and since there's two of these I tend to just pass one of each of them through each hole just to separate them out make them a little easier. Um, and now this is where all of your extensions come in. So what the extensions are going to do obviously is get all these wires down and out through the bottom of the ham to where we can attach to them. Um, you'll notice that these extensions have a little clip. What that clip does is it actually holds them on really well so you don't have to worry about them coming off once they're attached inside the arm because that can be a real pain. So I just kind of like to organize my wires nicely. Find the three that are on this side of the cross and the three are on that side of the cross and pass them through the appropriate um, hole at the bottom there. So one. Now if you look in there, the servo has two chamfers on the square end of the servo and if you look in the end of the um, 
the plug, you'll see those two chamfers in there. So you just want to make sure they line up, which is about like this. So the smooth blank side up. And you just push it on there until that little clip snaps over. And then we'll take that wire and we'll feed it out through the bottom of the hand and pull it tight. And we're just going to do the same for the rest of these wires. Make sure they snap so you don't have one coming apart on you after this whole thing's assembled. And pass it through the slot. And then one final one. Now, <clears throat> this last one I'm putting together here, this is the wire that comes from the one in the wrist that controls the palm. And it's actually slightly long enough, almost reaches out the bottom. So what you end up having on this one when you put it through is you end up getting a little bit of extra wire here. You want to go ahead and leave that connector up inside the hand. You don't want to try to pull it through the slot. So what I tend to do is just kind of fold that wire down and let it live down in that thing and just kind of smooth all these wires on the back side here, keeping all this stuff good to go. There you go. Okay. All right, so that wraps up the wiring. So the only thing left is our skin. So we will come right back to that.